Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the latest episode of This Is Why We Stand. I am your host, Joe Arcino, and I'm very, very honored to have once again for this Veterans Day edition, especially my good friend, John Fratangelo. John, it has been a couple months since I got to have you on the air. Still one of the most memorable interviews I've ever done. So my friend, it is a real honor to have you here for this special Veterans Day episode. Oh, thanks, Joe. It's such a pleasure to be on with you. I mean, you've become such a good friend of mine. I really appreciate everything you do for all the veterans. And well, to, no, help that's, me out. to me, that's one of the most special things about what I about doing this is, you know, you, you become, you know, you, you meet people like yourself and you become friends. You you form these relationships and you know, I never take them for granted. I'm proud to be able to tell people that I can call John Fratangelo a friend and uh, your story is just absolutely incredible. For anyone who missed the first interview, John is a Vietnam War veteran, Silver Star recipient, recently the author of The Last Goodbye. And we really delved very deep into his book on the first interview. And big news recently, John, which we didn't get to talk about on the last one, is the documentary which came out about your book. Maybe for, for anyone who missed that first interview, you maybe you could just talk about the motivation behind your book, what it what the meaning behind it is, and then what it was like to see it kind of come into a new life in terms of a documentary. Yeah, right. Um, well, the, 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 the David Kaltenbach was the, was the producer of the uh, of the documentary, and uh, he had gotten one of my books to this guy called Nevius the Third, called Van Nevius the Third. I'm sorry. Who, uh, who was part of Code, Code Media 88. And he's, he's, he's helping me so much. He's, he's got such confidence in this book that they're really trying to really promote it to, to be a, 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 you know, motion picture or, or a TV series, you know. And, um, so, uh, he had, Carl Van Nevis had got, given the book to, uh, uh, not given, he told me to send David Carter back a, a copy of the book, which I did. And when he read it, he said, he, he's just amazing. He, he just flabbergasted by it. And he, uh, he wanted to do this documentary. And that's what he did. He came up to the house and with, a, with one of those drones and a camera. And it was great. It was great. Did a great job. You know, first was a, a, a two minute preview of it. And then it went into a 32 minute. And I have some of my friends and Vietnam friends and some of the guys with me and, and uh, relatives who are speaking on it. Actually, it's 13. And uh, with, upon, even with my wife, Judy. And when you if you watch the documentary, I got I guarantee you you're gonna cry when you see her speak because she was fantastic. But when he when he read the book and saw the the storyline of why I wrote this book, and because of my cousin who was killed, you know, and who came to me in a vision, not I wouldn't even call it a vision. It was more like a an an, appar- an apparition. It was real, you know, and he couldn't leave this world without saying goodbye to me. And he shook my hand and just turned around, vanished, you know, and, and I said that back way back then, I said, one of these days I have to tell this story because I want everybody to know that Tony existed, my friends existed, that they were here one time, living beings like you and I, you know, walking this earth, doing everything we do, but they got cut short at 19 years, 20 years old. And uh, so he, when he read the book, he was just amazed by the storyline and everybody, Everybody who reads it, you know, comes back with me with great, you know, comments, you know, and uh, get five star reviews. And uh, I got I was most worried about uh, veterans, especially Vietnam veterans, because I figured they could be the most critical. And uh, I said, man, uh, that's why I said in the beginning of the book that this is my story. You got you guys got stories you don't to tell. But uh, they come they call me up and they say, John, thank you for writing this book, man. You know, so. That was good. That was really good. I have, so far, I have not gotten one, knock on wood, negative response to this book at all. Everybody just loves it, you know. So I'm and then, very happy I did it, you know. And I, I mean, rightfully so. And I think one, there's so much to love about the book. And I think more than anything, it's the authenticity. It really is so authentic. You know, you you really provide such a great, like, intimate, in depth view of your relationship with your family, the struggles, everything that the, 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 the details, big and small of deploying in Vietnam, every detail. And I think, you know, that, that really is the gift of a skilled writer is 
you know, when you can really bring your your life into and make it real for the reader. And that's one of the things you do so well. And I think so many other people feel it. But just to go back to the documentary for a minute, and I do think that was, I mean, it was incredibly well done. And like you said, I mean, you, if you, if you watch that and you don't shed a tear, I don't know, I, I, because I don't think most people can. It's again, it's, you just have all these different people adding in their thoughts to it. And especially your wife and just the way I think she said it so well, you know, about people like yourself. You, you were kids when you went over to Vietnam. You had your whole lives ahead of you, but you answered the call and you went and you, and you fought the good fight. And especially for your cousin, who we know is so important to this book and the meaning behind and his sac and his sacrifice and the way you pay tribute to him. I mean, I think for Veterans Day, especially, it really makes you just have to show so much gratitude to people like yourself because again, so you were what nineteen years old when you made, went over to Vietnam, right? Right. Yes, nineteen. Yeah. Nineteen years old, and I think your wife. I mean, when I just the way you could see the emotion in her voice talking about that. I hope that no one takes that for granted because if anything, we have so much to be grateful for in this country, and for people like yourself and all the all your your buddies who were out there with you fighting the good fight. Uh, we can never say thank you to any of you enough. Thank you. I appreciate that, Joe. Yes, I really appreciate it. I mean, all, 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 all us veterans, especially now the Vietnam veterans, uh, after, after what we went through, uh, not being recognized and, and appreciated, you know, and finally it's been, it, it's brought, it's come to light, you know, with everybody getting shit, uh, hands shaking and telling us thank you for your service. It means so much. It, it really does it means so much to us, you know, um, uh, because most of us, like, I didn't say, I, I, I never spoke about this at all to anybody. I mean, you know, like you mentioned, I got the Silver Star. I, nobody ever knew I got the Silver Star. I, mean, I never told anybody about that, you know, and, uh, you know, until they come to the house and they seen it hanging on the wall or something like that. But other than that, I never mentioned it at all because it didn't, didn't matter to me. It was just a, a metal, you know, it didn't, had no meaning to me at all, you know. Uh, I mean, I didn't, I didn't go there expecting, to be awarded any kind of medal. I just went there to do my year and come back home, you know? So it just happened to happen to be in a circumstance, a circumstance that whatever I did, they figured I, you know, figured I need, uh, would, you know, deserve a medal, which I never thought about, you know? But, um, I, I mean, the, the veterans, uh, we're, we're so, I mean, it brought us out of a black hole that we were sucked into for all these years, you know? And uh, it was like God, you know, reaching down into this black hole in the form of, of the public, you know, and just bringing us back up by our hands and saying, thank you. You know, you are really appreciated now that, you know, what really you went through. And this book, that's what I wanted to bring out in the book to what a veteran goes through, whether it be a man or a woman, you know, um, that people don't know about, you know, all, all the all the other aspects of of being a, a combat veteran that people don't don't even understand because it's not being it's not only being uh, shot at or you know mortared or you know it's 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 the other elements you know the the friendly fire that a guy you got um, uh, Agent Orange that's still killing us you know what I mean uh, um, weather conditions I had I had two friends. Who were, one one was killed by drowning. I mean, I, I grew up with this kid. He was black American, and, and his name was Joe Majet. And we were close. I mean, I went to junior high school, and I went to high school with him. And we went uh, trained together in the army. And we went over. He we were in the same outfit, but he was in a big red one. But what wasn't in my recon platoon. But I found out he drowned. I mean, he drowned. You know. And my good, other good friend from Bronx, Marty Powers, we grew up together. He he fell off a pole. You know, you know, wiring it up for whatever he was doing, and he was a marine, and uh, you know, it's things like that that people don't realize. And then the bugs and the insects, and, and the weather conditions, and the disease like malaria, and that can follow you through the rest of your life. You know, and that and people don't realize how many different ways guys die without getting shot or blown up. You know, it's just combat is horrible. It's, it's just there's no word like I said, there's no word in the in the, in the dictionary that that can describe 
the what a combat veteran goes through. It's one of the hardest jobs in the world because it's twenty four seven, and you always got you're worrying about your life twenty four seven. If you're ever going to make it back home, you know, to see your loved ones, your wife, your mother, whatever, you know, whatever it is, you, can, you know, it's just. And this is what I want to bring out in the book. You know, what a veteran really goes through. You know, every day. So, I think it's uh, so well said, and you know, I think it, it's so you know. Again, when I think when so many people in the public think of war or, or combat, you know, you are all you do almost automatically think of just one thing. But like you said, it is so much more, especially in Vietnam. You know, it's the incredibly d- vast climate. Sometimes it could be pouring rain for for endless amounts of time, and then it's the incredibly hot sun. You have the insects, things like Agent Orange insecticides. You have uh, just a uh, enemy uh torture things i mean bamboo sticks uh all this type of stuff you you're you can never keep your guard down and i think certainly you know i've been so honored to have been able to interview a many vietnam combat veterans and i think like most it's just you never feel like you can let your guard down it's just one of those things it's a constant constant keeping your attention up not only for yourself but also for the guys around you right you know, um, when you fight in a war, like let's say, um, not to not to uh, you know bring down any kind of uh, uh, combat is combat, no matter where you are. But in in Vietnam, as opposed to like Afghanistan, you know, or Iraq, you know, when some in Iraq, and, and, and when you could actually almost see most of the time the guy shooting at you, you know. Or if he's behind a wall or something, or in a house behind a door or a window or whatever, you know, you could actually say, "Oh, he's coming from there. That's where he is. We got to zoom in on that, right?" But when you're in the jungle, I mean, these guys were below the ground. They were in the trees. They were in back to you. They were in front of you. They were on the side of you. You never knew where they were. And and, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say, 75 percent of the time, whenever you got into a firefight, you didn't even see them. Because that's how thick the jungles were, and they would and they would dug in, and 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 even if you even if you find where the where the where the whatever you want to call them foxholes were, whatever you know, their little cubby holes coming out of the ground, they they can go anywhere in that country. I mean, they've been fighting over a hundred years. So that whole there's another country under a country there, so they can go anywhere, and it's just amazing. So you don't you never know where your enemy is, and and they mingle within you, you know, and. and like uh, for an instance, for instance, uh, if you're in your base camp, you can you could actually see the Vietnamese walking like they were pacing. You follow me? So they're counting their paces. Let's say if they come from the uh, mess hall, to give an example, and they'll be pacing, all right, till they get to the gate, whatever, and that's where they zoom in on a mortar, or if they know where your ammo dump is. That this, this is all the things you got to watch out because they're they're right with you all the daytime. Then the nighttime, they they they're putting a gun in their hands or you know and just against you, you know. And you're talking to them in the daytime. You know? So it's just there was a horrible war, man. You just you had to be alert twenty four seven, like I said, twenty four seven. You know. So you know, I really appreciate you shedding light on that because I think you know I. I'll never forget when I had a when I interviewed a Korean War veteran, and, and like Vietnam, our Korean War veterans were forgotten for for, for a long time and didn't right. get the proper due that they deserve. But you know, he he really made that distinction, and you know, there's value in every sir in everyone who serves, but a combat veteran is a different breed. You know, so when when you've been under fire with your comrades and you face those harsh elements in, in a combat scenario. There's just nothing like it. You know, a combat veteran is just a different breed of warrior. And, you know, that's why I appreciate your wisdom so much because it's, it's something for, for someone like me, who's never been under fire. So many around the, around the country who are, who haven't been, it, it's just something I think we have to try to understand and, and really show our appreciation to you for, because it's, it's almost indescribable, but when you, when you hear these stories, it really makes you, it has to make you appreciate those who've actually done that because we are safe today because of people like you. Thank you, Joe. You know, the thing, like another point I want to bring out is like um, when, when you're fighting, 
and, and, and you know, and uh, you know, you go into the service like, all right, I'm I'm here to 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 the call from my country, okay, to do what they want me to do. And they train, you know, you go to the train, and you know, and, and you know, going through Vietnam, you go, you know, you're going to go there for a year unless you get cut short for some reason. But uh, when you're in when you're in battle, you know, the the, the mindset of I'm fighting for my country isn't there. You know, you're fighting for your friends. You, you understand what I'm saying? You know, you're not, you're not, you're not charging an ammo dump. Or, uh, I, I mean, an ammo. Uh, well, I guess it's called an ammo dump or a machine gun nest, and uh, and thinking that oh, I'm doing this for my country. No, no, that mindset isn't there. At least in my mind, what I'm doing is for my friends. Okay, who I know are doing the same thing for me. You follow me? I don't know if you're getting my point. No, I, I understand. I, and you know, I, it's, you know, to me, I'm a, I, I study military history too. And, you know, to me, one of the most fascinating places in the world to study is Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, bloodiest battle of the Civil War, 51,000 casualties across three days. And when you look at that battlefield and, you know, people wonder, you know, how did soldiers march shoulder to shoulder at a wall of flaming cannon and rifle? And, you know, when you try to explain it to them, it's because of the guy next to you, because he's going forward and so are you. You're not going to let him go alone. You're going to go forward, even though what you're going for, toward, forward to is the most terrifying thing in the world and could kill you. Right. Your buddy's going and so are you. I know. It's just like it's just like on D-Day when when uh, when uh, the when the. The, you know the army, the marines, and, and hit the shores with those, with those amphibious uh, uh, crafts. You know when the, they knew when that door came down, man, they're like dead meat. Yeah, you know it's it's just it's just incredible how you know the, the bravery. And uh, you know, it's I, I, my hats off to them. And I tell you that that had to be very very frightening for those guys. I, they, I mean, anyone who's seen the movie Saving Private Ryan, that opening twenty minutes yep. of the assault on Omaha Beach. Yep. I mean that is that is it, it, it that really is such an incredible depiction. It, it's so accurate of how yep. it actually happened. Um, yep. And I think I think it's a good segue for us, John, to talk about you know that bond you form with your comrades. We this is obviously you know a centerpiece of our talk today is about Veterans Day, and I'm sure for you for Veterans Day, one of the things that runs through your head the most is the buddies that you serve with, the guys who you, you were in the field with, who you formed lifelong friendships and relationships with. All right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I, 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 I know their laughter. I know their tears. I, I, I know their voices. I mean, if you don't see anybody for 50 years, you might not recognize their face, but I'll tell you why you'll recognize their voice. That's like a fingerprint, you know, the voice never changes, okay. So when I heard, when I speak to my friends on the phone, and I, which I haven't seen in over 40, 50 years, I know their voice, and I visualize their face as I knew them back then. You know, it's 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 amazing. Uh, I, I, it's so great. I mean, when we got together, you had to see us huddle and hug each other. It was just, I mean, I could cry just thinking about it. But um. And I miss the ones that we lost. I really do. I miss them a lot. You know, especially after all these years getting together. Uh, I never thought, I thought we were going to have, you know, maybe 20 years of uh, togetherness after this, you know, but so far, three of them are gone. And uh, I'm still very, very close with Woody, Reha, Smitty, and Delage. You know, we were in constant contact. And, and, and another one I forgot to mention, uh, uh, Paul Charles, who's in Texas. Who I recently got in contact with, and he knew uh, another guy, Charlie House, who was there uh, with us. But he reached, and I got a hold of uh, his family, but I never got a hold of Charlie House. And Paul Charles actually, he's the one who gave me the number. And Charlie House recently passed away of a heart attack. Okay, so we lost him too. So that's four. Okay, but I never spoke to Charlie House, and I wanted to talk to him so bad. Um, but I never got to talk to him, and I had sent his his, his ex-wife, I should say, a, a book. So 
you know, so she can read it. But, uh, and I sent one to his kids, but I don't know if they ever read it or not. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, uh, it's hurt. It hurts. It hurts real deep. It's a hurt that you can, uh, uh, it's like, it's almost like, you know, like, almost like losing your mother or your father, you know. It's just a hurt that uh, you can't explain. It, it cuts you deep, really deep, you know. And I miss him. And I miss him really bad. That, that's to me again one of the we go back to the book again you know the last goodbye that's one of the most powerful things in it i think is again you you just it's the authenticity of the experience of bonding with your fellow comrades and all the names you were just mentioning you you everyone who once you pick it up if you haven't done so already you really see how these individuals may how how they were in a part of john's life in vietnam and it's a soldier story, and, and at the end of the day, that's so important to tell. John, have any of I, I know one of the motivations for you to write this was, and you talk about that right at the beginning, is you know you want other people to go out there and tell their story. You've told talked to me about how it, how what it meant to your own children when they got to see and, and kind of un, and learn more about the experiences you went through. Have any of the other of your other comrades have they talked to you about maybe getting out there and and following in your footsteps and putting pen to paper or anything like that? Yeah, actually, um, there was one one fellow, Gene Lang, who was he was in Vietnam uh, after you know sixty eight with different out different times sixty eight sixty nine. This guy, he's done so much for the veterans. He's he's actually gotten I think it's thirty six counties in between Westchester and Putnam. To, to recognize the, the county as being a Purple Heart County, so well, I'm doing a we're doing a show we started last week, a weekly show. It, it's called Cold Wind Talkers, okay, from Triple Vibes Radio, and um, he's going to be on it tomorrow. And he has a great story. Uh, matter of fact, I'm, I think I'm going to make you contact him. He he had to escape from Hungary at the age of nine years old, and they had to go through minefields and. It's a great story. And I told him, Gene, and he, he wrote, you know, he wrote a bunch of notes like I had done with my book. He, and I said, Gene, you have to write this story because this is a great, this is so interesting, you know, about a kid coming from Hungary on the communistic route and had to go through so much to, uh, to get here and, and even lost members of his family in doing so. And, um, and then I end up going into the army years later and, um, he received, he got a Purple Heart. With, he had, Joey, he had to wait 44 years to get his Purple Heart. Okay. 44 years. 44 years. He finally got his Purple Heart. And which is ridiculous. Okay. But he, but he's going to come on the show tomorrow. And uh, I want him to tell the story so people can know. And I want him to finish. And I tell Gene, finish this book, man, because people want to hear this, you know. So I'm hoping he does that. And uh, I noticed, uh, you know, some of my friends, they're, they're opening up more than they used to open. And nobody wanted to say anything about anything, you know. But they're starting to open up because it, 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 the story needs to be told. And everybody has their own little story to tell, you know what I mean? But uh, that's what I want the veterans to do. Not only Vietnam veterans, any veteran, you know. Um, it's just uh, people need to know what the veteran goes through. You know, how they much do. They, they do. And I, 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 I think that's such a great thing, you know, how, how about your message. And I, I know, I think, I hope really for our veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan, they follow suit as well, because I think those guys really have so much to share too. And it's so recent what they went through. I think they have so much wisdom to offer. And, and I know, you know, it's sometimes it's, it's, it takes time. Like, like, like many guys who come back from war, whether it's been World War II, Korea, Vietnam, or beyond, it, it's not always easy to open up about that stuff. But I, I, I found in so many cases, people have told me, you know, it's almost therapeutic, you know, when you put pen to paper and you share your story, you relive and, and then it makes you reach out to other people who you serve with and then you reconnect with people. So it, it opens up a lot of doors. And it really ha is important. And I think, John, you, you know, you're one of those perfect examples. You're a great ambassador for that message. And I hope people continue to follow in that direction. Yeah, what, what, what I try to do, too, is, I, I, you know, for the, guys, for the guys who have it hard to speak, I said, look, if you can't talk about it, then go in your room, 
take a pencil and paper and write down your experiences. So people will know, because we're all going to die, let's face it, you know, we're not going to be here forever. All right. So people will know what you did and leave behind your little, leg- your little legacy to your family. They have the right to know. And they really, I, and, and I know they want to know, you know. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, one of the, my friends uh, around here that I, I, you know, I'm very close with, his name is Pat Farley. And um, he read the book and he said, uh, the first, the very first page where I call legacy is in one paragraph. Uh, you know, Joe, one I say, the, this is my, the, what the book, you know, what if you're about to read the book is my story and, and the thousands of others who have their own story. I urge you to tell when he, his brother, was a Vietnam vet and never spoke about it. Okay. Now his brother recently passed away. So he said, John, when I read that paragraph, I couldn't hold my tears back because I never knew what my brother went through. And by you saying that, it, it, it helped me so much to have closure about my brother. And when I read your book, I, I know what my brother went through. I said, now I understand, you know. And it meant so much to him, just that, just to, just that first paragraph, you know, before he even got into the book, you know, and, uh, that's why, I, that's why I tell people, just go into, just write it down, man. You, you need to tell your story. I know it's hard for some people, but to write it down, you're not facing anybody, you know what I mean? Looking at you, you know, just do it and, and have it done, you know, I think it's very important. It, it needs to be told. I mean, once you're gone, you're gone. No, nobody's ever going to find anything about you, or whatever you went through. Like everybody goes through, everybody goes through so much in life. I mean, you get knocked down. You know, I always tell my kids, you know, life is like a a boxing match that never ends. And you get, you just kept, you just kept, keep getting knocked down, knocked down, knocked down, and you get up and you get up and you get up, and until finally the final blow comes. You know, but but in between the final, the knocking down, the final blow. You get back up again, and you you live, and I, and you got to tell you got to tell what you what your life was through before you get that final knockout, and it's uh, it's very important to everybody and to to yourself. But these veterans are like I I keep, I keep saying they're in a dark place, and they're kind of afraid to come out of it, and I don't know why. But why why go to drinking and drugs and suicide? That's another thing. There's so many veterans committing suicide. If, if they would only talk to people and and write down their, their what's bothering them, uh, I mean, like even if you say, "Look, I saw this guy get killed this day, such and such a day. I saw him. I saw his leg get blown off. I saw this. I saw that. I saw that, whatever. You know, write it down because it'll help you. It, it might be very hard and difficult at first, you know, but it will help you to to life. Like I said, life's about you're going to deal. People get mangled in car accidents. You know what I'm saying, and and it's it's a part of life, and it should be told. I mean, when somebody gets in a bad car accident or a multiple car accident, it's in the papers. They talk about it. You follow what I'm saying? You know, if a president, you know, like Kennedy was assassinated, if nobody nobody would know nothing if they didn't talk about it, they wrote about it. You know, it's it's got to be told, Joey. It's got to be told. And you say it so well, and I, I think I want to build on that and, and really emphasize. You know, I have a, another a dear friend, Thomas Georgie. I, I've told you about him before. Another Army Vietnam veteran, Silver Star recipient like yourself. He was wounded in battle, and it was the action that actually ultimately led to him receiving the Silver Star. And I never forget when he told me when he was in the hospital, finally got shipped back to the states, recovering. And, you know, when he started to tell people, his family about what was happening, his mom tried to stop him because, you know, she could she didn't want him to, you know, get get upset or anything like that. She was worried about him. And he said, you know, I have to talk about it. If I let this all bottle up, it's going to just, it's just going to destroy me. And right. he said how much it helped him being able to talk with people he trusted about what he went through. And he told me that's, he, he thinks one of the issues that a lot of veterans deal with is, you know, they try to bottle that stuff up and, and, it, and instead of putting it out there and talking about it, they just try to tuck it away and hide it. And that's, right. that's just not healthy. He, he, and I think he's a great example of that. And you've been talking about the same thing. So you got two guys, two warriors who could stand beside anybody and fight any day who are both sending home the same message. So I hope right. that, that your words, the words of Tom and Georgie and so many other guys 
hit home with the veterans who need to hear that. Right, especially, especially like, especially if you're talking to uh, other combat veterans and you're saying something, say, oh man, yeah, that's right, you know, this happened to me. You know, all of a sudden they'll open up. You know, you, you follow what I'm saying? It's like open up a can and, all the, and the fumes come out first before you get to the food. You know, you know what I mean? It, 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 when, when you're talking to somebody who's been through similar, similar uh, episodes, it, 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 right away, all of a sudden, they open up and back. Foot. Man, you're right. I, I remember that, and this happened to me. Did that happen to you? Yeah, man. It was, it was like this, was like that. Holy, you know, this is great. They say this is great. You know, let's keep going. You know, that's that's what you got to do. You got to open up that can, man. Let let the fumes out. Get to the food. You know, get to the main part of it. You know what I mean? And uh, then it'll help. It will definitely help. You know. Oh. I can't think of a better Veterans Day message for the show. You know, I think, John, we we hit your documentary. We hit the book. And I think for Veterans Day, you know, I wanted to talk about the what would the meaning of it for, for you, the, the, the relationship with your with your comrades. We got to a, such an important thing, which is always, you know, ways we can help our veterans, those who are struggling. Uh, these are all such important things. And, John, I, you have such a great voice. And I think so many veterans especially our guys who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, I was just talking to one earlier today and they always talk about, you know, what it's like when they get to, to talk with a Vietnam vet such as yourself. So you really are in such a important position. And I, I, I think you, you continue to use your voice so well. And uh, I just want you to know how proud you, you, I know you make your family as a friend. I couldn't be more proud of everything that you continue to do. So I just want to tell you to keep on doing it, my friend. Uh, you, you just, again, not, not everyone can communicate as well as you can, uh, whether it's, it's writing or speaking as you are now, you have a gift and I really hope you continue to use it, my friend, because you're doing special things. Thanks, Joe. I'll try. (laughs) Keep it up, my friend. And, uh, for anyone who wants to catch the documentary, I will include the link in the description box of this video so you can check that out. I also have a link where you can purchase a copy of The Last Goodbye, one of my favorite reads of the year. The holidays are coming up, so it certainly would make a great gift for anyone who wants some good reading. And, uh, and John, I know you've got the, your show tomorrow where you've got a nice interview lined up. Where can people check that out? Oh, it's on It's on uh, Code Media. Uh, actually, we have our website now that they set up for me. It's uh, the last goodbye-book.com. The last goodbye dash book.com. And hopefully it'll be on there. And I have to find out the link. I'm not too sure what it is right now, but I'll find out. And I can yeah, also. You know. That's the thing. Well, John will send it to me and I will include that in the, in the, in the description as well. So anyone who wants to go and check that out will be able to as well. But, but John, thank you for making this such a special Veterans Day episode. Uh, I always really appreciate your time. And just learning from you. Every time we speak, I feel like I've, I've grown and I've gotten smarter and just learning everything you have to offer. So I know this is certainly, we have many more of these. And I keep saying once things are finally opening back up more, we've got a big reunion thing planned where we're hopefully going to get a lot of the guys who've been on the show over the years and bring all of you together. I would love all you guys to meet and, uh, being able to do this in person, it's going to be even better. So, my friend, I can't That's wait great. for that day. Me too. <laughs> I, I, Joe, I just want to say one thing. I just want to wish all the veterans out there, you know, uh, a, a great and healthy and, and uh, safe uh, Veterans Day. You know, I'd like to say happy, but sometimes you can't say happy Veterans Day because even though it's Veterans Day, it's still a memorial because you always think of your friends, you know. It you is. Are. Okay, but uh, God bless all of them. I mean, I really mean that. I love you guys all. I love you all, guys. God bless each and every one of you who served this great nation. John, they, same to you. I hope you have a very safe and great day thinking of all the buddies that you've served with. And uh, I can never thank you enough for your service to our nation, as with all those who've served our nation. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, John, for being a part of the show. Stay tuned, and we will have more soon on This Is Why We Stand. <laughs>